Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny, and this is the Have and the Have Not, Season 5, Episode 6, and the name of this episode is A Hurricane Offshore. Now, the episode opens up where, um, where it left off. David tells Erica to get those flowers and put them out of her room. We see that she takes the flowers and goes to the door, and who's standing there? No other than Veronica. What's wrong? Don't like the flowers? And pretty much, you know, Erica's kind of stunned because she's like, who the hell are you? But she's like, I'm Veronica Harrington, and you are? And she's like, and, and like Veronica, and like at first she's kind of stuck, but then David says like, uh, Erica, put her on the phone. So Erica gives her the phone, and Veronica immediately goes in and starts saying, oh, wow, you went from a white woman to a beige woman. I wonder how many other women you're gonna have to school before you get back before you get back to my complexion. I'm like Veronica, you messy bitch. <laughs> but it was really crazy because like Veronica was just taking digs, and then and then pretty much asked Erica, "Excuse me, where can I find your pimp?" I'm like, Damn, like she was just doing the most. Like she was really going in on on both of their asses. But then David lets her know, like, look, leave Erica alone. What, like, what's going on is between me and you. Do not take it out on Erica. You know, leave her alone. And immediately, that jumped out of Veronica. She's like, huh, you're protecting her. And you only protect things you care about. It's like, but okay, David, we're going to have our day. Trust me on that. So she pretty much hangs up the phone and then invites herself into Erica's room. Erica ends up calling security on her ass because, you know, the bitch is fucking crazy. So then she starts asking questions like, so tell me, how old are you? She's like, well, I'm not as old as you are. And I'm like, damn! I'm like, Erica literally stood in her shit and was not going to let Veronica intimidate her. Which I applaud her, but then again, like, um... She just had, she just had his, um, his previous mistress killed, so I don't think you want to fuck with Veronica Harrington, because that bitch is psychotic. She'll get rid of your ass. But, then again, they're going back and forth, and, and, uh, within this conversation, she, she pretty much, uh, she, Erica finally does tell her that her name is Erica, and then... She just immediately just continues to make digs at her, talking about like, oh, you're from, oh, you must be from Florida. Yeah, I can tell by your complexion, which is kind of dry, by the way. You need some SPD treatment. I'm like, see, see, Veronica, Veronica. <laughs> I mean, she really had me laughing my ass off, because I'm like, there's like, every time you turn around, she is taking a dig at her ass. And then proceeds to tell her that, look, you, you know what they do in Louisiana? You know, they have to, you know, bat up their house every time a hurricane comes comes to town. Well, the thing is that sometimes they have to go through that all of that hard work, and they don't even get a hurricane. So it's like, here it is, they did all this, you know, all of this work for nothing. But I'm here to let you know that there is a hurricane that's coming to town. And the, and, and it's, and the name of it is Veronica. And Veronica will fuck up everything in sight. And anything that's in its in its way, it will destroy everything around it. So she pretty much let it be let it be known in a very subliminal way to Erica that I will fuck I will fuck you up and everything around you. And then uh finally security shows up and then she immediately goes like, Oh, okay. Have a good day, Erica. Bye. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh my God, Veronica is like, she has now been set free, and she's out of control now, and it seems like Veronica is just going to be getting her hands into everything, because we already saw that she did that shit with Candace and Jeffrey, now she's doing that shit with Erica, and then we're going to see later on, she's going to be on to something else, so... Let me keep moving forward to let you know what's, what's on, what's, what happens after that. But yeah, I'm definitely going to get to that, though, because that had me dying. I was laughing so hard. Next, we actually have Candace and Jeffrey. Now, Candace and Jeffrey are still sitting at the hotel bar. Um, 
they're going they're pretty much talking and within this conversation Jeffrey starts taking jabs at Candace in a way where he's pretty much saying that well the thing is you and my mother are a lot alike you know you guys always find challenges and you always you know you always you always have a, a way of thinking that you're gonna you're gonna pretty much solve whatever problem that comes your way you look at all possibilities but then he said you also are a lot of like because you all like to you you both like to use people to to get them to do what you want them to do you know pretty much saying that she used Benny because once she because you know he found out because like we actually saw in the last episode she does tell Veronica that she forged documents or whatever you know you know to um to get the loan from the bank but she actually tells she actually tells Jeffrey that it was Benny who she forged because she put everything in Benny's name and he's like yeah just like my mother you always use people to do what you want them to do but then Candace flipped the script she's like excuse me but what the hell you what the hell you think you're doing with the um officer you using him and he's like no I'm not I'm not using him bullshit you are but then again you call feelings for his ass but she's like oh my god you like him and she's and he's like no no it's not like that I'm like yeah you saying that but he definitely likes you though I'm like cause you know come on now Candace loves the kids so you ain't gonna be able to lie to her ass but Jeffrey is so fucking stupid he thinks that he know more than what he really does but he did kind of get her in this one part where, um, where you know they they were still going back and forth, taking jabs at each other. So we're really starting to see that little friendship that they had is starting to fall beneath the cracks, and we're definitely seeing that between them. And and pretty much he um, and pretty much uh, what, what ended up going on was that um, well. Oh yeah, well she is. It got to the point where she he kept saying shit, and she pretty much got to the point where she was like, "Do you really want to make me mad, Jeffrey?" He was like, "Hmm, mad." Um, in order to be mad or to show emotions, you would actually have to be a human being who cares about something. But you, on the other hand, are a sociopath. Sociopaths don't get mad. And she was like, "You know what? Go to hell, Jeffrey." I was like, "Oh shit!" Like they both now going back and forth. Like, she talking down to his ass, and then he fucking psychoanalyzes her. <laughs> so, that shit was crazy. And the thing is, the whole time while they talking, her phone is going off, but she won't answer it. And we later on find out that the person who's calling her is Benny. And the next thing you know, while they're both going back and forth or whatever, Oscar's ass shows up. And he's rude as fuck to Jeffrey and tells Jeffrey, get the hell out of here. This this doesn't concern you. And he's like, who the fuck you think you is? Jeffrey's like, who the fuck you think you're talking to, son? He's like, yo, I I, yeah, I could use, like you say, man, if I've got my hands on another knife, I could actually stab up somebody else. Shoot. <laughs> hell, I'm already going to kill somebody. Might as well kill another. And then all of a sudden he walks off. I'm like, Jeffrey? Jeffrey? See, the thing is with you, Jeffrey, that I can't stand is that I be wanting you to be like that completely, but you go back and forth. Like, one minute he goes, he, go, he has this moment where he's a boss, and then he goes back to being a three year old kid. And we see that back and forth with Jeffrey, and it's irritating. And I know I'm not the only one who, who thinks that. But uh, he's pretty much letting her know about the mark. And we come to find out that the mark that he's talking about is Charles, who's a friend of, who's a friend of David's, who's running for president. That's his mark. Um, he pretty much gives her the information. Like, he says that this is his wife. His wife died a year ago. You guys, like, you, you pretty much are his type. You can easily get this guy. It's an easy mark. And eventually, she pretty much yells, just like, get the hell away from me! And eventually, he walks off. Um, so next, we actually see that, um, then after that, we see that Jeffrey gets a, gets a, um, a call from Justin. He had, Justin asks him where he is. He says he's at the Artesian Hotel. He asks him, does he, does he have a room? And Jeffrey says no, and he says, get one. 
I'm like, oh yeah, bitch, you about to pay for this shit. Shoot, this motherfucker helped you guys get off. And he didn't turn you guys in? Oh yeah, you about to give up that meat tonight, Jeffrey. You about to give up that meat. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, um, Candace even clapped and she's like, oh, we're getting a room. And he was like, answer your damn phone. And then decided that, like, you want to answer your phone? And then just decided to walk off. I was like, okay. Like, both of them, like, being real shady right now. So, next, um, we actually see, um, she, um, she actually sees, I think it was, uh, Erica. Er um, her, um, her and Erica are talking on the phone, and she finds out that, um, that Erica is at the Artesian, so she goes up to her room to, um, to meet up with her. Then we also see that Erica and David were on the phone talking, and David wants to take her out to dinner. So, they, get, they actually have a date later on that evening. So, we actually see that, um, the scene between Candace and Erica is everything, because we can definitely tell Candace is feeling some kind of way. Because she's starting to realize that a lot of this shit that went down is due to um, Erica coming up with that idea about those documents that she should forge his name and mortgage off everything. Because next thing you know, um, we actually see that Erica brings up war, which actually gets Candace shook. But then Candace mentions the paperwork, and then we see Erica get shook. I don't know if anybody picked that up, but I definitely noticed that. So, and we actually see that she's like, I've lost everything. They even took the $20,000 I had in my safe. They have everything. Like, they have everything. Like, I don't have nothing anymore. I'm completely tapped out. And, of course, and, she, and I think she's starting to see that Erica is not really the loyal friend that she thought she was, that she's really starting to see that Laurel, that um, that that Erica has a has a different. She she definitely has like some type of some type of um, hidden agenda, and I think Candace is starting to pick up on that shit because the way she was looking at her was just like, yeah, I'm on to you, bitch. Something ain't right with your ass, but I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. And then she also tells her that she killed Quincy. And that the police found the body. And, you know, she's like, oh my God, I could have helped. She's like, no, no, it was already enough going on. You know, ain't like your ass is going to help anyway, Erica, because you're saying, oh, let me know what I can do to help. And then when she tells you she needs help and she needs money, you can't fucking give her that. So, bitch, you, you're good for nothing. Sit your ass down. So then... We actually see that she finally answers the phone for Benny. Benny's mad as hell. And she tells Benny to meet her at the lobby. Next, we also see Wyatt and, Wyatt and, um, Wyatt and um, Quia's crazy ass. They done fucking got into his apartment. He's still having these um, body shots because his ass left the fucking hospital before being discharged stupid bitch and then on top of it he's feeding for drugs so he pretty much is you know sweating and he's shaking and he's doing all this shit and Quita and her dude is pretty much just they're holding up the spot and Quita pretty much says that this is what we're going to do we're going to spend the night and then tomorrow we're going to the bank and we're going to get all that money out your account so I'm like y'all motherfuckers are dumb because next thing you know, they both go to the kitchen to see if they can find something to eat. They ghetto as fuck, too, talking about some, man, let's fucking, uh, call, let's fucking order us a pizza and shit, you yeah? And, and like, you know, let's use his credit card and shit. And then, like, then they go, then they proceed to go to his damn refrigerator to see what he got up in there and shit. And we see that, um, Wyatt gets a hold of a phone. And the question is, who's he, who's he trying to call or reach out? Or who's he trying to call or hit up? Guess next week we'll find that out. Next, we actually have a scene with Candace and Benny, and man, was that an explosive scene because they in the fucking upscale hotel. They got people around them, and he is just going off on Candace's ass. 
He's and he's just letting her fucking have it. He's like, look, you about to get your ass up out of here, and if I gotta drag you, drag your ass out of here, I will. Get, let's go. We going to the damn hotel with mommy, and we gonna get to the bottom of this shit. And she's like, look, I can't leave. I've been on my own since I was seventeen. I don't need nothing from nobody. He's like, man, I want to hear that bullshit. Like, look, I've lost everything because of you. I've lost my tow truck. I've lost everything. And she's like, I can't even, and she's like, you might as well come with me because I couldn't even find your car. And she's like, what? Like, yeah, bitch. Um, you don't understand what they mean, what they mean by, you know, they, you know, what they mean by these damn mortgage, like, every, like, foreclosure, like, everything is confiscated. Like, they arrested Mitch. And they arrested Mitch for driving his own damn car. Like, what you got right now is that, girl, you, you're practically breaking the law because you're driving a car that no longer belongs to you. Because everything that you spent with that money has to be accounted for. So everything, so the bank gets everything. And the fact that you're driving around that car, pretty much, you, you're pretty much a wanted woman because you're, you're practically driving around in, in, a, in stolen property. So he had to explain that shit to her ass. Like, bitch, are you fucking crazy? Like, everything is caving in on you. And then to top it off, he finally lets him know that war is out. You need to fucking come on and, you know, cut the bullshit. And I'm not here for it. Bring your ass on. But I have to admit, that scene was really good because he, it got to the point he was just over it. Like, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't here for her lies. He wasn't here for her stories. He wasn't here for none of that shit. He was like, you know what? Get your shit. We getting the fuck up out of here, and that's all there is to it. And there's no more. And there's no more left to be said. And we actually see that Candace actually gets up and she leaves. After that, we go to the to the crier's house. Jim and Catherine. We actually see that Jim is watching the news, and they're doing um, a story on um, on the case of Jennifer Salison, and he's keeping up with it to see what's going on with that. Because you remember from the last episode, him and David talked, and what they're going to do is that they're going to take Jennifer's body to the house, burn it, and then there's four guys that Jennifer had convicted that are getting out. One of them works at Mama Rose's, um, I think, uh, one of Mama Rose's businesses, and they're going to frame that guy, because I think it's a, a dry cleaning business, and that they're going to have him go to her house and... Uh, they're going to pretty much, you know, convict him of her murder. So they're going to put everything, everything on this innocent guy. Which is crazy as shit. But hey, this is how, this is the games that, that, that the rich play. So, so pretty much, um, we actually see that he's following up on the news story. Catherine comes in and Catherine is still in her mode, still telling Jim to get the fuck out of her house. She don't give a shit about nothing. She don't care. And, you know, he's telling her that, look, you need to make things right because at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to clean up your fucking mess because what, I mean, what you've done was crazy. Like, you shot the damn DA in your fucking living room. Like, at the end of the day, you're not fucking hearing this. Like, you need, like, if you go down this road, your ass will go to jail and you will lose everything. I'm trying to help your ass. But she's still telling him, get the fuck out of my house. I don't care. And and pretty much, he pretty much tells her that, look, I'm not leaving until you get some oxygen in that damn, till you get, like, till you get some oxygen in your damn deprived brain. And I was like, damn, just went in on her ass. And pretty much let her know, like, look, you know, what you need to do, instead of you trying to make Veronica your enemy, you need to be getting on her side because right now she is the wild card. She can ruin everything for everybody. So we need to get her on our team. And she's like, I will never talk to her again. Not after what she did to my son. I don't give no fucks about Veronica. I'm not talking to her. He's like, well, fine. I'll talk to her. And then the next thing you know, he turns back on to the, he turns back on the TV they're still talking about Jennifer Salison. Tell me why the hell Veronica is like literally walking behind the fucking um, news person 
while while she's reporting while she's reporting at the scene, we see Veronica. Uh, we could, oh yeah, let me do this shit. We see Veronica and shit. <laughs> and I was just laughing my ass off. Like she at the damn scene of Jennifer Salas's house, and it's like she in the middle of every fucking thing. And Jim's like, "What the hell is she doing there?" So yeah, that shit got crazy. Cause that that scene had me laughing. I'm like, damn. He watching the damn news and you just see Veronica's ass and had another be and she looked right in the camera when she walked past too, just <laughs> that damn Veronica is such a fucking mess. But I'm saying she's a hurricane and she's already starting to spin. Next we actually see Hannah and Q are still at the hotel. Um she actually she's also watching the news and they're talking about Candace and the discovery of Quincy's body. So she tells little Q to go um, get his game and, you know, put on his headphones. She looks at this. She's pretty much watching TV. They pretty much, um, they pretty much uh, are, are talking about Candace being a possible suspect in the murder of, of, um, of Quincy Maxwell. And then they mention um, keys to a Jaguar and the serial number. So we know that's Jeffrey's car. But then they said there's also a bracelet that didn't belong to the suspect, but um, we're going to actually run DNA to see who this bracelet belongs to. And we literally see Hannah, Hannah is literally thinking while she's watching this on television. Well, one, because they're talking about her daughter, but then there's another reason. Next thing you know, we see Benny and Candace finally come in to the, ho to the motel room. And then all of a sudden, she looks at Benny and was like, Benny, where the hell is your bracelet? So now Benny is tied to the body too. Now the question is, did they serve that search warrant before or after Candace lost the house? Because now that they found all of this, and if they actually searched that house before um, before the bank foreclosed on it, they all are going down. Because they're talking about Candace on the news. But then Jeffrey's tied to it, and so is fucking Benny. Because Benny was the one who buried the body. So while he was doing that, he lost his bracelet, and it, it, it was attached to his body. So it's like, damn, Quincy. Quincy just took, took motherfuckers down with his ass. So yeah, but um, but um, that's my review for for tonight's episode, guys. Again, if I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I would love to talk to you about it. But subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Leave comments on this video, like this video, share this video, and um, I will be back with you guys next week for the next episode of the Haves and the Have Nots. And um, again, I'd like to thank you guys for all your love and your support that you've shown me. And I will continue to deliver great um, content for you guys. And I will continue to get better at my delivery. So until then, everybody, take care.